Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth, and what we're going to be talking about is box and whisker plots. And so you should recognize some of these things here, like we've already learned in the last lesson what a median is, how to find it, and you already knew that from previous years too. Okay, and then we also talked about how to find the upper quartile and the lower quartile, and then also the upper extreme, but we also and lower extreme, but when we were talking about our last lesson, that was the uh, lowest outlier, the highest outlier it could have been also too. So we're taking all this information that we have, and we're going and plotting it above a number line. Lots of students will do some um, shoddy work and they won't plot it above the line. They'll try and plot it on the line. Uh, please make sure that yours is specifically above the line so it looks nice and neat like it's supposed to. Anyway, so then you plot it above the line and so you can read what your extreme is, 54, this one would be 45, the median would have been 37. And so you can look at this and you can see that, hey, these are all quarters. So here is the the one quarter of the students or whatever that your, your data set is taken from. Here's another quarter, another quarter, and another quarter. So in between the lower extreme and the upper extreme, we're talking about 50%. And you could even say that 31 here, that there is 75% of these um, numbers or whatever this data set is, is above um, 31. Okay, so you could use this information several different ways. And it also shows a median inside there so you can see if it's skewed or if they've got a tightly compact amount of data. It tells a lot of things about it. So we're going to talk about that some more too. Well, let's go and deal with our first problem. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to make a box and whisker plot of this data. Okay, and so here is all the data, and I just so happen to have it all on a nice line right here. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to first of all figure out what our median is. So why don't you stop a moment here, get these numbers all caught up, and figure out where the median is located. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right here is where we are right in between those two. So we've got to take an average there. So that's going to be six in there. And um, and I don't have a number six already, but let's get it in there. Okay, so there's a six located. Okay, and so... Okay, then let's find that median in between here. We call that the lower quartile. Okay, and so we're going to have that as a 4. Okay, then what was, would be that median of this top half of the data? That would be called our upper quartile. And there we go. Okay, so we've got also our two extremes. There's that five number series that we talked about, five number series that we talked about earlier this year. Okay, so now we're going to plot that on top of a number line. Okay, so we've got one as our lower extreme. Okay, we've got four. And we've got six. And we've got nine. Notice how I'm plotting them all above the number line. They're supposed to be all in a nice, neat, straight line, but that's not happening. Okay, and then we got 15 for the last one. So we need to go and draw some lines. Okay, oopsie. Okay, the last two, the, the two outer ones, the two sets that are out on the outskirts of this thing, that is the lines. And then we create a box in the middle for the middle three. Let me get that. <laughs> okay, and then we also draw a, um, I'm going to grab this one here, we also draw a median too. Oh, I don't know where that went, so I'll draw one in. Okay, there we go. Not the prettiest line there, but okay. So we, we've got our box and whisker plot made. 
Okay, and it's it's pretty nice. It shows where the median is. It also shows how far that this data stretches out. Okay, and it also shows where the 50% of the middle um, of the data here. What are these? This right here is earthquake sign. So this right here is the depth of the earthquake. So it's in a small concentrated area here because I suppose it could be smaller. Anyway, so what percent of the earthquakes are between four and nine kilometers deep? Well, let's look at that. Um, okay, and so remember that each one of these are a quartile or a quarter of the data. And so that means that 50% is going to be right in here. So what percent of the earthquakes are between 4 and 9 kilometers? That would be 50%. Okay. Now sometimes you could go and explain these a little bit further. You could talk about how that the data is, um, is between 4 and 9 is where half the data is. But then the other half of the data extends all the way up to 15 and all the way down to 1 kilometer deep. And so you, I mean, when you're talking about different types of situations or if you're comparing two, two different box and whisker plots, always think where are those main percentages in the center located? Because that's really what we're trying to always compare. That data that's in the center is always what's newsworthy, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at another type of problem. So in in problems number, um, I think it's three, four, and five, you'll be making box and whisker plots with there. And so um, you'll do it just like this. Don't forget to write out a number line, plot the five number series above the number line, create a box with the three um, plots in the middle and the whiskers off to the side, and don't forget to mark your median. Okay, moving on to the next. And these type of problems, they want you to analyze them. Okay, so like this is not a problem in your, in your book. I just want to talk about it for a second. Okay, so what was the greatest score in this one right here? Here's a, here's a test, here's some test scores. What is the greatest score? Well, it would be the, you know, the upper extreme. So that'd be the greatest score would be 26. Okay, explain why the median is not in the middle of the box. Well, it's because there's more data that's that's located right here. Okay, this much data took took up 25%, a very small portion. Same with this one right here is a very small portion, just 25%. It's kind of spread out in here, so it skews it so that it's not perfectly in the middle because you've got a concentration of data right here. Okay, what percent of the scores are between 13 and 18? Okay, so you remember that, that that is 50% is inside that box, isn't it? Okay, half of the scores were higher than what score? Hmm. Well, here's 25%. Here's another 25%. So half of them were higher than 16 and also half were lower than 16. Okay, and then last but not least, what score had 75% of the scores higher? Well, here's 25% plus another 25% plus another 25% is 75%. So it'd be right here. 13 has 75% um, of the score is higher than that. Okay, moving on to another one. Okay, so here's number two in your homework. We did number one, here's number two. And so now they've actually got two box and whisker plots. This right here is the average gas mileage of a sedan, which is a car, a four-door car. Now look, it goes all the way from, what is that, 40 miles per, per gallon, all the way down to 21, 22. Okay, and look, it looks like it's got a lot of tight data in here, and then it's got some spread out data throughout here. So that means it's got some cars that are, do really good, but it's more spread out what their miles per gallon is. But a lot are concentrated right here. Okay, and then look at the SUVs. Boy, they're just chugging up the gasoline. Uh, they're their highest mileage is the sedan's lowest mileage. Cars get better mileage. It's true. Okay, so, well, I shouldn't say it is for every case. Look how tight this data is here. So most of these SUVs were getting 17, 18, 19 miles per gallon. A couple would go all the way up to, or I shouldn't say a couple, lots of them would get up to, um, to 22, but... Most of the concentration is right here. Okay, so which type of vehicles tend to have the best fuel efficiency? Well, which ones have the highest highest score on this? It would be the sedans. 
Okay, compare the most fuel efficient SUV to the late, least fuel efficient sedan. Well, this is where you go and talk about where that middle 50% is at. Because those are the, those are the, um, pieces of data that we like to talk about you know they're going to say well you know that the speed is about i mean excuse me the the gas mileage they're going to talk about that middle 50 percent where it's mostly at they might talk about oh once in a while you'll get up to 40 miles per gallon here or once in a while you get up to 20 miles per gallon but i mean they're talking realistically so they're going to be comparing these middle 50 percents in there and that is where the data is taken from um, to, to make the statistics for the car to get that median value that's always on the sticker for, for buying the vehicle. Okay, well, um, let's see. I think that that's the last one I got. Yep. And so um, don't forget. Oh, let me get this up here. Uh, you need a five number series. You need to plot them over the number line. Okay, and here is the numbers in your series. So you have to draw out your numbers and, and put them in order to figure out your median your upper and your lower quartiles, and then your upper extreme, and then your lower extreme. And then you can plot them. Okay, and don't forget where all of your data is located. Okay, most of the data that we're interested in is right in this middle section here in the box, and that shows where 50% of your data is located. Okay, well, here are the problems for you, and um, I did... I did one for you and I did two for you. So you've only got four more problems to do. So go ahead and get to that and that will be due um, next time I see you. See you later.